I believe that there is something to having a face on 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 video. I mean, we're you know, as humans, we're used to just looking at something and identifying with another human on the screen. Whether or not you're actually focused on me is a totally different story and and completely irrelevant to the fact that it just adds that little extra touch of having a human form on the screen that somebody um, is is being directed by is being it's being the story is being narrated by that person and I think that that's an important quality and characteristic. To have. Synthesia. Artificial intelligence is everywhere in our lives. The phones we use, the cars we drive, the devices we buy, even down to tech used in certain surgeries. And recently, I had the opportunity to be cloned by artificial intelligence and, well, let me tell you, it's pretty wild. Hello, this is Dom, your friendly neighborhood artificially intelligent virtual human. Lately, I've been working on a project with a company called Hour One who specializes in virtual humans and I've been turned into exactly that. So how did we get here? Well, I had to go through a process of documenting my movements, my speech patterns, things like that in front of a huge green screen so that they could extract that data and it can be put together using their AI algorithm to generate what is now my artificially intelligent avatar. Hey Dom, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing great, I love that clip. That's a full 10 minute video where he talks about the whole process. And so you just saw you know, 45 seconds of that. So I recommend people check, it, check out Dom's, um, Dom's uh, YouTube channel. And also I actually just did a story using the same platform uh, uh, of our one to talk about your story. So I know you okay. created, you used, I, but I used your avatar. I couldn't use your voice though, because you've, re uh, re you've restricted use of your voice, yeah. but I thought yeah. it was uh, super fun to do that. So tell me like, how did this all come about? I mean, honestly, it was uh, a personal curiosity of mine. Uh, it, it has been for quite some time now of just um, exploring what is available in the virtual human space and actually this uh, my first experience and, and not to take this too off track but my first experience with virtual humans was with our or with uh soul machines back in uh back in uh, 2019 2018 somewhere around there right right when they were first starting up and that just sparked my interest in the whole field and so fast forward to 2022 I was curious as to what has been more developing in this space. And so I decided to look into um, just just to look into it to see what what people were doing now. And I came across our one and I thought that the, the platform and the technology and just the results of everything was absolutely phenomenal. Well, and I think one of the really interesting things is uh, for for using this. So you went through the process of creating your uh creating your, uh, your yeah. real human. And so I think it was like two to three hours. You basically sat in front of a camera, took, said some things, yeah. did some different head, head positions, and then it, you sent off the file and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was pretty much like that. It, I, I was, I will say this though. It's a lot more difficult than it sounds. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot more to it. Yeah. It's, it's sitting in front of a camera for, for two to three hours um, but there, there are certain motions that you have to go through. Um, you have to, you have to speak um, consistently uh, and uh, either on script or uh, random uh, patterns of speech for two to three minutes at a time without stopping. So, um, so they can capture all your mannerisms and everything like that. And um, and then from there, um, you have to do it in different. Uh, uh, d different positions and different movements. Like I have to do it with with hand movements, without and and things like that. And then also while staying completely still. So imagine having to talk like this and keeping a conversation going for three minutes at a time without actually stopping, while not moving your entire body, is really a much more difficult thing to do than I personally thought it was going to be. Yeah, fair enough. Now when you were going through this process, you were talking for three minutes at a time. Yes. Were you just talking randomly or was there is a script and you had a teleprompter? How did you do it? Well, they do have prompts that you can use with, with a teleprompter. Like I believe they have like um, stuff that people have used before, but for me, I just, I have the keen ability to just tell random stories about stuff that makes absolutely no sense. 
And so I was just doing that and talking for, you know, three minutes at a time about completely random stuff. Like, I, I think one of the stories that I went into was just how I was fascinated with the whole Amazon warehouse logistics system. And it was just a long tangent about that. <laughs> yeah, well, that is fascinating. I, I yeah. spent a lot of time in warehouses. I can imagine that. So the I think this is also uh, very interesting because you've been making YouTube videos for 10 years. Uh, yeah. And if people aren't familiar with Dom, he's one of the top tech reviewers, tech product reviewers is the way I think of it uh, uh, yeah. on, on YouTube. And, you know, as a YouTube creator, how do you expect to use this? I mean, I think that there are so many different avenues that this can be used down. And a lot of what I think is um, like, at least in the very short term period is a lot of good um short form social media creation and even like everybody is getting into the uh short form video right everybody i mean like you were you're just talking earlier with ann about TikTok. that's a big one right there there's TikTok. there's youtube shorts there's instagram reels and that's where our ones platform i think um is going to shine the most in the immediate future is short form video because it's it takes a lot of a lot of time and energy to set up something to shoot specifically for short form video, um, because usually when we're setting up stuff, it's like we spend a lot of time on the angle and the lighting, on getting the audio ready and everything like that. And using something um, like this from hour one, it allows you to cut out all of that beginning stage process, and all you have to do is worry about the planning and what the actual video is going to be about. And from there, you can execute it in a matter of minutes. Yeah, I know, it is pretty amazing. So let me ask you this other question though, because I think this is a really important one. Mm -hmm. People have a relationship with you on your YouTube channel. Yeah. They know you, they trust you. And as good as virtual humans are, we, you know, they're, they're past the uncanny valley. They're very comfortable to, to watch. And they're not even distracting after you watch them for a little while. They're, it's just like, okay, great. It's, it's like a person talking to me in many ways. But it's not you. And I think intuitively, I know that this interaction that I'm having with you right now, versus if I had Dom's digital twin on here right now, it would look a little bit different. Yeah. So what is your what is your thought about how you're going to use this then? Because you can't use it for everything, maybe if you thought about different types of formats that you might use it for or how you're going to express to your your viewers when it's the digital twin, when it's you. Yeah, I mean that's a fantastic question. I I think that uh I think that for me personally, um coming from more of a, a news broadcasting perspective might be the best route for me because obviously like for my reviews like that needs to be more of a personal thing you know what I mean like that needs to be something more that um, people have that deeper connection with but as far as news goes where maybe it's just sharing screenshots of different leaked devices or something that's coming out in the near future and I'm just like a talking head on the screen that you're not really having that personal connection with you're having the connection with the thing that you're trying to find out about that's new that's like you know you're not tr putting your trust in somebody in, in the same way i believe as you would if you were doing a review on something got it so you've got your 10 minute videos which are the reviews let's say that you know, some are longer yeah. some are shorter but let's say it's a 10 minute video in-depth reviews and then a news item which might be a, like a one minute hit which would also qualify you know potentially as a youtube short or something like that but the people in that case who are subscribed to your channel get that news really simply uh, from you but you probably wouldn't set up a whole uh, elaborate uh, video production just for a one minute news hit yeah i mean that's that's what i'm thinking and and like i said it's all about the time that it saves in my opinion um even versus like because because like obviously i could just do a voiceover for things like that and save and save a lot of time also without having to set up the camera but i believe that there is something to having a face on 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 video i mean we're you know as humans we're used to just looking at something and identifying with another human on the screen 
whether or not you're actually focused on me is a totally different story and, and completely irrelevant to the fact that it just adds that little extra touch of having a human form on the screen that somebody um, is, is being directed by is being, it's being, the story is being narrated by that person. And I think that that's an important quality and characteristic to have. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I, I'm looking forward to seeing some studies that compare the real human versus the virtual human versus the text and audio on screen. Yeah. You know, that I think we're going to see there's going to be a different engagement levels in all three. I, yeah, I think that'll be a very interesting study. I'm very excited to see if that ever happens, at least in the near future. I, I mean, I know we're getting there with all this technology and it would be great if somebody would just come out and do something like the ABC type of test or, you know, like a, an AB test with a control. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Maybe we just figured out something to do here. Yeah. Uh, Dom, how can people uh, learn more about what you're doing and keep track of what's going on in your YouTube channel? Yeah, um, well, I'm at youtube.com forward slash Dom. So it's a very simple URL, very easy to remember. And um, that's probably the best way to keep up to me. I, I'm not um, super active in terms of like updates on like social media, but I, I, I am on, on Twitter and Instagram as well. And you can just find me under Dom Esposito if you just search for me. But the best way to keep in touch with what I'm doing is YouTube, youtube.com slash Dom. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for taking some time today. Everyone check out the video about his experience with our one and check out his other videos too, because yeah. Dom is Dom's a cool guy who does really good stuff. And I love the fact that over a decade, you can see the evolution of your YouTube videos. It's, it's sort of an encapsulation of how YouTube videos have changed over the years. And now you're on the cutting edge of the next wave of evolution yeah. of YouTuber videos. Yeah. Thank you for having me so much. For Synthedia. Synthedia.substack.com. Synthetic media, virtual humans, voice clones, deep fakes, AI image and text generation news and more.